Hi there guys, Kate Bank here and welcome to this channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, click that button and subscribe. This channel is mostly about fun traveling, tips, great traveling videos about Switzerland and also about other European countries. And today, out of all countries, we are in Germany. We're in southwestern Germany in Constance, the city of Baden-Württemberg. It is located on the river Rhine, uh, right next to the lake Constance, or also known as Badensee. And I will share 10 top things to do and to see here. All right, and now about the history of the city. The city was a site of the Roman fort that was captured in the third century by Alemanni. Well, who were those Alemanni? Alemanni were the Germanic ancient tribes. They established a bishopric here in 6th century. So bishopric is something like a theocracy, like theocratic rule, where the religious leaders were ruling over the cities. So in 1183, Emperor Frederick I, also known as Barbarossa, made peace with the Lombard states at Constance and made Constance a free imperial city in 1192. In the 13th century, the city prospered with a lot of its trade, predominantly linen. Being so prosperous and obviously powerful, by the 14th century, the city was able to free itself from any episcopal influence and became a head of a powerful small confederacy of towns. Sort of like, you know, Swiss old confederacy where a few cantons got together and sort of created a loosely based country, you could say. So during the Council of Constance, Jan Hus, the Bohemian religious reformer, was tried and burned here in 1415. There were a lot of uh, religious tensions back then here. The bishop transferred his bishopry to Marysburg and Bishop of Catholic Church naturally was forced to do it because Constance actually accepted the Protestant Reformation, right? However, it was defeated in their Protestant movement in 1547 and the city lost its free imperial status and became Roman Catholic again. It fell under the Austrian rule until it was assigned the Duchy of Baden in 1805. Although many treasures and archives and many other things were ruthlessly removed, stolen or burned, many churches and monasteries suppressed, some destroyed, most fortifications pulled down in the 19th century and previously, but the city still remained a cultural and economic center to this district to this day. And because it almost lies within Switzerland, it's so close, it's directly adjacent to the Swiss border, that you can literally walk from the nearby city called Kreuzlingen. You can literally walk to Constance, something that I've done on a number of occasions myself. So luckily, because it's so close to Switzerland, it was not bombed by the Allied forces during the World War II. The city left its lights on <laughs> during the night to fool the bombers into thinking that it's actually part of Switzerland, because generally Germans uh, kept the cities off during the night to just protect them. one what to see and as always the most important thing to see in most medieval old towns would be the old town itself which considered remarkably large for such a small modern size constance it has many magnificent old buildings beautiful twisting alleys and the city skyline is dominated by the constance cathedral several other churches and gorgeous buildings Definitely worth your attention. Number two is the console building. It's a three-story massive stone building with a very tall roof that was built in 1388 as a warehouse for traveling and local traders and served as transshipment point for merchandise for the port of Constance for almost 500 years. During the Council of Constance in 1417, the election of Pope Martin V took place in this spacious building. 
and a true landmark of the city Imperia. So Imperia is a statue at the entrance of the harbor of Constance, commemorating the Council of Constance, as we just seen, that took place here primarily between 1414 and 1418. The concrete statue of 9 meters and 18 tones stands on pedestal and rotates around its axis every 3 minutes. It was created by a very famous sculptor, Peter Lang, and erected here in 1993, so a fairly recent thing. The erection of the statue caused a lot of controversy, <laughs> because if you look closer, and we've seen it already, uh, Imperia holds uh, two men in her hands and the men actually resemble the Pope Martin V and Emperor Sigismund. <laughs> uh, the creator himself does not agree that they represent in particular those people. Interesting fact that the guide that I actually traveled with here pointed out that Imperia represent actually a prostitute <laughs> who was holding <laughs> the most powerful man at her hands. Because if you pay attention, they're both naked. Imperia herself is half naked. That sort of could potentially point out both the official lead of the country. So the government and the religious leaders are both fairly corrupt and far from perfect beings. But that's only one of many possible interpretations, so please feel free to share your own in the comments below. It would be interesting to know what do you think. And no number four, probably the most fascinating site here, is the Constance Cathedral. The original cathedral that stood on its place collapsed in 1052 and the reconstruction took place under Bishop Rumold. For the next 300 years, this cathedral saw continuous construction, completing roughly in 1378. What's interesting that between years of 1414 and 1418, cathedral hosted the Council of Constance, the most important assembly of the church in the medieval ages, and the only one on the German soil. Martin V, who had been elected the Pope and enthroned in the cathedral in 1417, ended the continuous schism dividing the church. Uh, the building itself is designed in a Romanesque Gothic style. A uh, truly gorgeous place, definitely worth the visit. And the first thing that you will see entering the building is the confession room. <laughs> it's interesting to point out how much the times have changed uh, from complete disregard of the human feelings and ideas in the medieval times to probably complete obsession with them today. So if something happened to you back then and you did something questionable, you would go on a confession. The person who heard you would probably say, um, oh my God, you have to pray for an indefinite period of time and go on pilgrimage. That might kill you, but you know, whatever, you'll save your soul. Uh, today, you probably go to a shrink indefinite number of times and try to figure out what you were feeling and what you were thinking at the time of the matter and how do you feel about it. So the times have changed, indeed. And now to the lovely side, my personal favorite, I would say, this lovely fountain uh, that was built in honor to Carl Stoyer. Carl Stoyer was a great comedian, and the fountain is super funny. You have water from the nose. It's also in a lovely location. This like small garden that looks stunning. The narrowest building in Europe. Yes, this one in green. That's the narrowest building in Europe. And this is probably one of the most interesting, strange, weird, hard to describe sites ever. This is site number six. Here we're coming to another creation of the same sculptor Peter Lang, who created Imperia. The name of this creation fountain, Laube Fountain. This is hard to describe in a single word. Maybe Imperia 40 years later, that's the woman 
with this fancy pants. And another interesting fact, Constance is actually home to one of the oldest breweries in Germany, Albrecht Brewery. There's actually a history right there. It started brewing in 1226. Not many breweries can boast such numbers. And site number seven, a truly magnificent one, the vineyards right by the city. There's a great view over the city from the hill and the great view over the vineyards. Definitely worth a climb. Today's city's economy is actually centered on chemicals, pharmaceuticals, biotechnology and communications. But notwithstanding, obviously, tourism costs. Constance is actually one of the most popular tourist destinations for, yeah, surprisingly enough, Germans themselves. In many um, circles, this is the symbol of wealth if you are able to afford holidays around the Bodensee, because this is one of the most expensive areas in Germany and one of the most expensive areas in uh, Europe. No wonder it's right next to Switzerland. <laughs> Everything is expensive in Switzerland or near it. So for many Germans, this is the symbol of status of wealth, if you can say that you have been spending your holidays in Constance. And site number eight, Schnetzer Gate. This is the old city, old city gate. Uh, truly gorgeous, beautiful arches. You could walk under into the city. Magnificent view. the side of a very beautiful church from the outside it's a completely unremarkable building but definitely visit the church in english it is known as augustinian church in german it is a mouthful the high Kirche. i probably butchered it but there you go it was built in 13th century for a local augustinian hermit monastery um, that is why it's also known as augustinian church functioned as a monastery church until it was dissolved in 1802 then as a garrison church later as a hospital and old catholic church today it's simply a city church it is very beautiful gothic style church definitely worth a visit And finally, the site number 10 is simply walk across the bridge and look at the city from the other side, especially in the evening, opens up a terrific view. All right, my dear friends, thank you so much for joining. That would be all for Constance. Don't forget to subscribe and see you soon.